In some of our cities and towns, grammar schools still survive. They take children who pass the 11 plus exam. Only one in 20 pupils in England goes to these schools, but in some counties, it's more like one in three. In a small town in the Yorkshire Dales, the grammars take the top third of pupils and the effect is very marked. I'm on the commuter train to Skipton where the local community is divided over the 11 plus. There are two grammar schools in Skipton, both very good schools, one for boys, one for girls. But some parents feel they cream off the best pupils with a knock-on effect for the other schools in the area. There are also big issues about private tuition that parents pay for for their children to get into the grammar schools. The two grammars, Ermistead's and Skipton Girls High, didn't want to take part in this programme, but it's clear they are the best for results in the area. And while they are very strict in only selecting children by ability, only 1% are on free school meals. It's a fairly affluent intake. The local education authority told me that while it has a great variety of schools in North Yorkshire, it has high standards across the county. It said the system reflects what the local community wants and that parents always have the option to call for a ballot on the future of grammar schools. Hi, Hello. 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 Nice to meet you. Come in. Thank you very much. Sally, come on. In Skipton, I've come to meet two mothers and their daughters who are close friends. One passed the 11 plus, one failed. This is Audrey Midgley. Her daughter, Georgina, got into the girls' grammar school. Do you think it is competitive being yeah, a grammar school? Yes, quite competitive being a grammar school, yeah. Audrey likes the grammars because they're unashamedly academic. She wanted to send her son and daughter to them because of her own time at a comprehensive. The school that I was at, although it was a good school, um, it was very easy not to work hard and not to be um, seen as, as being academic because you get the mickey taken out of you. So um, I did definitely feel that um, a different type of environment would be better for my own children. They push the children and have high expectations of them academically and I like the idea of that. To ensure Georgina passed the crucial 11 plus, Audrey felt she had to hire a private tutor. The problem has grown because of the league tables and the fact that those two schools are perceived as being two of the best schools in uh, the north of England. Uh, so, so many people want them to go there and it's very competitive and that's how the tutoring has started. And most people are having their children tutored. And a lot of people like me are frightened that if they don't, um, their children won't pass and they should have passed anyway. <laughs> The tutoring certainly helped, and Georgina's now at the grammar. Her friend Sarah Johnson, who she sees at the local youth club, didn't have a tutor. Sarah failed, and she goes to the local comprehensive. I didn't feel too much pressure or anything, but um, because um, I tried my hardest and everything in the test, but I didn't want to go to somewhere which, which wasn't my standard, which was too hard for me. In the end, you thought, if I don't get in, I mean, it's not like the end of the world. So I'm still going to get a really good education anywhere else. So I didn't know where to go, but mum was going, oh, you want to go here, you want to go here. Oh, good, because I'm, do I, do I really? Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm glad I got tutored, because then it would have given me a higher you, chance, you, because the test is more, it's not really anything we'd learned before. So well, yeah. unless you've been tutored... I think you don't know where. You should prepare them for it, but not actually... Yeah, like, get more of because I have to tutor. Oh, I've got a spring in my step already, just at the thought of that. Sarah's mum says the pull of Skipton grammars is distorting the local property market. I think a lot of people move into the village specifically so that they can get their kids into the grammar. And it has affected things like house prices. There's no doubt that prices in this village are higher. So it's favourite thing, that old shoe. Yeah, and his, yeah. And his little blue mouse. She says that failing the 11 plus was a real ordeal for her daughter, Sarah. I didn't realise how upset that made her feel in comparison with her, her friends. She hid that, and I'd never put any pressure. It was a blow, and Fiona felt that tutoring gave other children an unfair advantage. Families here will coach their kids and spend a lot of money, you know, two or three thousand quid coaching for two years prior to the exam. So then I started to get really angry about the whole <laughs> system and think, well, it's very biased against people who don't have money, those who have money, can buy into the system, basically. What, what do you think the effect on children is of set, sitting a test with all their classmates and then finding that some pass and some don't, and they're being weeded out, effectively, at 11? I, I think it has quite a detrimental effect, and I think it's not fair on the other schools around. Um, they've got 
to fight against kids coming to their school feeling failures. And I do think it affects um, their confidence and their esteem in how they approach wherever else it is that they go. Exam pressure, tutoring, feeling like a failure. It's a culture the grammar schools helped to create. But I'm not sure that's what education should be about today. I'm unashamedly opposed to grammar schools. I believe that we don't weed out children at 11 because of the way they look or because they're funny or because they've got a nice smile. And it seems to be artificial that we should do that with children on the basis of a rather arbitrary test for which many kids have been tutored for. I'm also very sceptical about the idea that grammar schools are a route out of poverty for working class children because all the evidence seems to suggest that the children who go to grammar schools tend to come from quite privileged backgrounds already. Grammar schools, private schools, church schools, successful and high performing, but add them all together and you can see how many escape routes there are for parents. There's a yawning gap in achievement between pupils in deprived areas and the rest, a potential time bomb. So are we in danger of returning to the sort of polarisation the comprehensives were supposed to get rid of? How do we get back to a system that's fair to everybody, regardless of money or class? <laughs>